Before the patient arrives, the healthcare providers perform a routine check of the equipment to ensure that it is in safe working order. This includes making sure the stress echo equipment is in a locked position, the monitoring equipment is functional, and a resuscitation cart is stocked and readily available. Before beginning the procedure, the indications for the study are reviewed, along with relevant clinical history such as prior cardiac surgical procedures or presence of an ICD. A focused physical examination is performed. After a discussion about the risks and benefits of this stress test, informed written consent is obtained. The physician and sonographer prioritize what hemodynamic data should be obtained. For example, in patients with HCM, LV outflow velocities are most important, but mitral regurgitation severity and pulmonary artery pressure should also be obtained when possible. The target heart rate is 85% of the age-predicted maximal heart rate and can be calculated using the formula target heart rate equals 0.85 times 210 minus patient age. The patient lies on the stress echo table and telemetry leads are placed on the patient's right and left shoulder and right and left leg. Telemetry leads should be placed to not interfere with image acquisition. The blood pressure cuff is placed on the arm and a baseline blood pressure is obtained. Baseline vital signs including blood pressure, heart rate and rhythm are recorded. The patient lies on the stress echo table in a supine position and the safety belts are attached. Many stress echo beds allow lateral tilt to optimize image quality when needed. This tilt can be stored in memory for use during the stress test. The sonographer then acquires the baseline images and hemodynamic data per study protocol and prior discussion. At baseline, echocardiographic imaging in an apical long axis view shows hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with normal left ventricular systolic function, color flow evidence of an increase in velocity proximal to the aortic valve, and mild mitral regurgitation. Continuous wave Doppler shows only mild subaortic obstruction at rest with a peak velocity of 1.5 meters per second. The most widely used bicycle stress protocol utilizes fixed pedal speed with increasing resistance in a staged manner every three minutes. The patient is positioned on the stress table and the patient's feet are strapped into the pedals. The pedals are then repositioned to optimize pedaling comfort. During pedal downstroke, the patient's leg should be slightly bent. Explain to the patient the stress testing protocol and how to monitor pedal speed using the metronome function. Allow the patient to pedal without resistance to get comfortable with the bicycle in speed of pedaling. Reposition the pedal length as needed. Once the patient understands the stress protocol and is comfortable with pedaling, the patient begins pedaling. Once pedaling at the appropriate speed, begin the stress testing protocol. The patient's vital signs are monitored throughout the test. Record a blood pressure and heart rate during each stage of exercise, generally during the last minute of each stage. The patient's symptoms are monitored closely. Ask the patient if they are having any symptoms at each stage or with visible change in patient status. If rhythm abnormalities occur, record the rhythm for further evaluation. During each stage, or at intervals decided by protocol, echocardiographic image acquisition should be performed. The same data should be acquired at each time period as was acquired at baseline. Here we show the peak left ventricular outflow tract velocity determined by continuous wave Doppler obtained during exercise. Same patient as shown as baseline. The patient should be pedaling at a rate of about 60 RPMs. 
There is a metronome function to cue the patient to the proper speed, as well as a green light indicating that the pedaling speed is correct. Terminate the study when target heart rate is achieved, the patient has given maximal effort or is limited by symptoms, or if a safety endpoint has occurred. Heart rate response to supine exercise is often lower than with treadmill exercise. Allow the patient to cool down by continuing to pedal for one minute without resistance, then unstrap the patient's feet from the pedals. Once vital signs have returned to normal, patient monitoring can be discontinued. If an IV is present, this should be removed prior to discharging the patient from the lab. After completion of the study protocol, the RN reviews the vital signs and telemetry recordings. Functional capacity, hemodynamic response to exercise, notable rhythm changes, and patient symptoms should all be recorded. In the meantime, the sonographer reviews the acquired images and selects the optimal digital loops and Doppler signals. If needed, additional measurements of Doppler signals should be performed. The sonographer then makes a preliminary study interpretation. The supervising physician reviews the patient performance, ECG, hemodynamics, and recorded echocardiography images. The report is then finalized and the study is complete.